Let's go. Leeds arrived at the Stadium of Light in fierce form, winning six of their last seven, including defeats of Leicester, Blackburn and Middlesbrough, and losing only one of their previous 11 games with a squad triple the value of ours and a Premier League budget to go with it. In most metrics, Sunderland Leeds post similar stats in shots on target, possession, pass accuracy and passes per defensive action. Sunderland Leeds are the top two pressing sides in the Championship, but Leeds are the divisional leaders in open play XG, where we are distinctly average. However, this was a rare occasion where Sunderland were up against a team that is as poor in the air as we are, and who play some of the fewest crosses in the league, so there was a bit of hope lurking around the crowd tonight. And then into the mix strode Mike Dodds, who in revealing his team's sheet, seemed to have gone crazy on the custom tactics, picking a team and formation that Leeds would have no fucking chance to plan for. You have to hand it to Dodds, the man did not choose to play it safe today. Safe rarely wins anything in tight games, nope. It saw three players drop from the win at the weekend as Dodds benched Equa, Adil Aushish and man of the match Patrick Roberts, as well as placing three strikers in the dugout with Abdullah Bar on the right wing and Jensen Sealed in the back line in what looked like a 5-2-3 with fullbacks pushing on to make a 3-4-3 in attack. Alex Pritchard also earned a starting spot with his decisive cameo at the weekend against West Brom. Our referee is Dean Whitestone. As the game opened, we saw the pace of Leeds' attack right from the start. They harried us, showing why they are the most intense pressers in the league. And it required some tight defensive work that wasn't always well-timed. Yes, he was, says Dean Whitestone. Jensen Sealt just caught him. Consequently, Leeds got chances early on. did well. And the cross was fizzed in quite invitingly for Pirro, well held by Patterson. For his part, Dodds recognised that if we got stretched upfield out of possession, that it would play to Leeds' strengths, especially if we lost the ball. Decided that Sunderland would sit off their own press in the final third, and he pulled his wingers in to play more narrow than recently. Watch here as Hume gives up the chase. When it's safe to do so, Hume and Barr return to their original positions and then the front three retreat to a distance outside the final third. And look here at Barr and Clark at how narrow they are. Usually they hug the touchlines, our wingers. Not now. They are offering the outsides to Leeds as the only place to go. Effectively, Dodds decided to pack the middle of the park with bodies, forcing Leeds wide and preventing them from playing through the middle. To make this work, we had to do two things. Firstly, we had to defend well. Niall Huggins wasn't taking any prisoners there. And that meant everyone. Especially outstanding in this task was Jensen Sealt, employed as a right central defender he was revelatory. He bullied Leeds for space in his position, refusing to allow either the player or the ball into and past his zone. It is exactly this physical dominance of space and man that has at times been lacking in our team. Bellingham presented it to him, really, and he's a bit lucky, Bellingham, that it came back as well. Especially at corners. But tonight, Sealt was brilliant. Dodds also instructed our wingers to play deeper than under Mowbray. Look here at the average field positions of Clark and Roberts against Plymouth. They are a mile away from the rest of the team, with no one ahead of them to pass to. No wonder they were constantly isolated. It's the same against Millwall, with Barr on the right this time. Both wingers are the most advanced players and isolated from support. Even against Huddersfield, which saw Paddy drop back looking for support, Clark is still incredibly remote and isolated on the other wing. Now. Compare that to Dodds against West Brom, and we have Aushish ahead of the wingers as an option, and those wingers sitting deeper, closer to supporting players, and one of our early chances in that game came from having more options around our wingers. 
Look here as Ballard moves the ball out against West Brom. Huggins receives it and moves forward, but watch Clark drop in behind him. And now Sheesh moves over ahead of even Huggins. The options for Clark are vast now. As it happens, he decides to move the ball over to the right and it finds Roberts. Watch Hume advance past him, just like Huggins had done moments earlier on the other side. We see Roberts with multiple opportunities in front of him, and he selects Aushish in the channel. Post saves Albion! Oh, my word! Holy mother of God! A pass in the channel provides a simple one-on-one -on -one that nearly goes in. From back to front, six passes, less than 30 seconds, much more direct. Thank you, Dodds. Against Leeds, then, the need for this quick release and support was even more imperative. And you can see just how different the field positions of Clark and Roberts are compared to Plymouth. Against Leeds, they are much closer to supporting players and options, and we used it to play much faster in transition. Here, you can see the urgency after Seals' excellent cover to release the ball quickly. And now Sunderland might be able to build. Dodds forward. Abdullah Barton Pritchard uh, in the middle, hoping that the cross might come their way. That's extremely good play by Clark. It doesn't come off, but the pace and directness is something we have been missing recently. We broke again from excellent defensive work by Luke O'Nine, which ends up with Gray bringing down Jack Clark. Bring it down and nine. He goes Clark and Gray now. It's going to be a free kick to Sunderland. The card might come out here. The resultant free kick confirmed that Leeds were not just as poor in the air, but tonight they were much worse. Ballard gets his head to this, and it's only a goal line clearance that prevents Jensen Seal from opening his account. Leeds kept it out, poked away by Pascal Strout. But from the subsequent corner, Silt gets a free header and nails it into the top corner. Joe rode on really dangerously. Pritchard with this corner kick for Sunderland. And the flying header, what a save! Oh. Silt was off and celebrating, and Melier clawed it away. It's only a world class save from Melier that prevents this from opening the scoring on the night. With his right arm in the air, he thinks it's a goal. After a tough 15 minutes, we were well and truly in this game now. The tide had turned, and it was Sunderland all over the pitch. Spence was beaten to that by Hume. Here goes Barr, four against four here. Abdullah Barr. Wasted opportunity. Having been stifled in the middle of the park, Leeds tried going over the top, but that failed too and their frustration grew visibly with Kamara imploring his teammates in front of him to offer him something to pass to. Time and again, there was simply nowhere for Leeds to go. Their only option was down the sides and over the top, neither of which worked. Some of them. And when we won the ball, we broke. Sunderland might break here. Four minutes of the first half to go. Great with Clark again. He's going to need a bit of help from Dan James. He's done well to double up on Clark. Time and again. Decent ball up. Dan James for Leeds here. Huggins in front of him. Huggins foul him, didn't he? No, says the referee. James went down too easily. That's lovely from Clark. Well, he's done really well there, Joe Rodon. We were in control of this game now. You want to see ball playing centre halves? Look at the confidence of Ballard here. And Silt. Hume to Ballard. In fact, 
Silt was having such a good time that when he finds himself up the park and Trey Hume looks to Silt to resume his position so he can come up, Silt waves him away. Nah, Mara, I'm staying here. You cover back there. And he almost scores again. Huggins. Just one added minute at the end of the first half. Huggins in danger of losing it here. Retrieved well by Neil. Bent in and... And the lads went into half-time, unlucky not to be in the lead. In fact, such was Sunderland's dominance that for 50 minutes in the middle of the match between the 20th and 70th minutes, Leeds would get only two shots at goal. This would be one of them. And this would be the other. Clark continued to drop deep and Huggins to race past him at the same moments, pulling Leeds out of shape and always offering Clark options. And Seal continued to dominate his space and attacked fast on transition. Of the championship, Sunderland and Leeds. It's a decent little forward run and a very interesting ball out to Abdullah Bar. This resulting in a Huggins firebolt right at Melia. Dan Neal's there. Not the greatest clearance from Gray, he could say, by Melia. And from that resultant corner, there was a penalty appeal for Luko 9 being brought down in the box. But there's no flag from the linesman here, and the referee is on the spot. Both have a really good view of it. The defender doesn't see 9 and it's a 50-50 ball and an honest effort to play it, I think. On balance, it's probably harsh to give. But Leeds continued to be frustrated in their efforts to play through the middle. They had nowhere to go and no ideas about how to solve things. And if they did get the ball in attacking positions, we hunted in packs to harass them and deny space and time. And so it went. Roberts came on for Barr to terrify the Leeds back line in transition just some more. And Sunderland continued to pounce on balls and threaten. Sealed. Kamara did well. One back for Sunderland by Neil. Good run by Neil, then a stumbling, bumbling little advance into the penalty area. He nearly lost his footing. The lads' back line crushed attacks. Spence here. And Spence has got away. Now what can he do with it? Really well covered by Ballard. Very good defending that by Ballard. And again here, all of them are just so committed to making the space theirs. That was really well defended. It was dangerous. That nearly sneaked in. He continued his run. Was really well found. Well, here you think he might be in, and then suddenly the route to goal snapped shut. Then Jensen Silt went down with cramp. Good tackle. And Dodds made an inspired substitution. There was a gamble. Equa came on for a cramped Silt with a note for Pritchard. Two minutes of the game with. Which, Pritchard will which instructed Job to go up front and Pierre to take his defensive midfield slot. This meant Hume dropped into the back three and Clark became a wingback in the 3-4-3. Dodds had effectively replaced a defender with a striker and was going to try and win it. Moments later, Clark was called into that defensive action to save the team with good work. as Somerville broke from a corner. It's excellent defensive duties from Clark, doing just enough to slow him down and harass him. Post-match, Falk gave some talk that if he goes down, it's a red card for Clark, but I don't think so. He's too far out from goal for it to ever be a red, so I think Somerville does the right thing in trying to get a shot off. And Sunderland looked increasingly like their old selves, playing short, fast, one-touch football to get out of the press and move rapidly upfield. And it was just this sort of rapid, intricate play that saw Dodd's gamble of moving Job up top pay off. Round the corner neatly into Daniel by Alex Pritchard. 
Roberts is in the middle, Huggins. Back in by Pritchard, Bellingham! Oh, it fell beautifully for him. All he had to do was get his head on it, and Joe Bellingham put Sunderland in front. If you in the way it came to Bellingham. It was Dan Neal who drove Sunderland forward here. Huggins got himself involved. Neal's ball in. And it came to Pritchard, who tried very, very clever. I'm sure he meant it. And Bellingham was being played onside by Gray and just had to touch it past Ilan Melier to give Sunderland a precious lead. The goal prompted Ron Jeremy to come again with his last available substitutions, desperate in an effort to get into the match. They now had four forwards on the pitch, and they got their chance. Poor ball by Notto was pounced on by Perrault, only for Trey Hume to block on the line. Perrault, it did. Perrault and off the line brilliantly. Congratulate him for blocking this. Joel Piro with the goal bound effort poked away by Trihume for Sunderland but it's a corner Sunderland then saw the game out with pressure on a desperate Leeds Clark here harassing Somerville Richard Clark trying to get there ahead of Somerville and he's done well Leeds have a throw but they and Pritch rushing Rondon into an error. Rodon. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Dodds sucked up time through a final substitution, bringing Dak on for Alex Pritchard. And the lads held firm. Luke O'Nine wins a canny foul here. O'Nine running it away, and he's drawn the foul from Matteo Joseph, who shows his naivety, really. And finally, another Rondon error saw Roberts win a free kick at the death. ...to manage this game. Bellingham for Dak, free kick. And Dak, seeing the time, just punts in out of touch for the win. Tonight was a cracking result for Sonnen and Mike Dodds in particular. Back in February 2022, Dodds had took interim charge following a 6-0 hammering away to Bolton. He looked frightened back then overawed by the responsibility and delivered two feeble and embarrassing defeats to Doncaster and Cheltenham Town. Nearly two years later, and what a tale of redemption he is writing for himself. Full of confidence, prepared, bold and inch perfect in his substitutions in the two games he's managed. He's gained the respect of supporters and immeasurably enhanced his own credentials. Take a bow, Mike Dodds. Two wins from two against two promotion rivals. Outstanding stuff. If you like the work I do, then drop me a like. Definitely share this with people you know, and consider giving me a sub. And I'll see you next time.